Hello, beloved. This devotion is for Thursday of the eighth week after Pentecost, July 30th, 2020. We begin with our opening versicle. O Lord, open my lips, and my mouth shall declare your praise. Make haste, O God, to deliver me. Make haste to help me, O Lord. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Hallelujah. Our psalm for the week is Psalm 125. Those who trust in the Lord are like Mount Zion, which cannot be moved, but abides forever. As the mountains surround Jerusalem, so the Lord surrounds his people from this time forth and forevermore. For the scepter of wickedness shall not rest on the land allotted to the righteous, lest the righteous stretch out their hands to do wrong. Do good, O Lord, to those who are good, and to those who are upright in their hearts. But those who turn aside to their crooked ways, the Lord will lead away with evildoers. Peace be upon Israel. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Our hymn for the week is hymn number 713 in Lutheran Service Book, From God Can Nothing Move Me. Today we're singing stanzas four and five. Each day at his good pleasure, God's gracious will is done. He sent his greatest treasure in Jesus Christ, his Son. He every gift imparts, the bread of earth and heaven are by his kindness given. Praise him with thankful hearts. Praise God with acclamation and in his gifts rejoice. Each day finds its vocation responding to his voice. Soon years on earth are past, but time we spend expressing. The love of God brings blessing that will forever last. Today's reading is from the first book of Samuel, the 15th chapter, beginning at verse 10. The word of the Lord came to Samuel, I regret that I have made Saul king, for he has turned back from following me and has not performed my commandments. And Samuel was angry, and he cried to the Lord all night. And Samuel rose early to meet Saul in the morning. And it was told Samuel, Saul came to Carmel, and behold, he set up a monument for himself, and turned and passed on and went down to Gilgal. And Samuel came to Saul. And Saul said to him, Blessed be you to the Lord. I have performed the commandment of the Lord. And Samuel said, What then is this bleeding of the sheep in my ears, and the lowing of the oxen that I hear? Saul said, they have brought them from the Amalekites, for the people spared the best of the sheep and of the oxen to sacrifice to the Lord your God, and the rest we have devoted to destruction. Then Samuel said to Saul, Stop! I will tell you what the Lord said to me this night. And he said to him, Speak. And Samuel said, Though you are little in your own eyes, are you not the head of the tribes of Israel? The Lord anointed you king over Israel. And the Lord sent you on a mission and said, Go, devote to destruction the sinners, the Amalekites, and fight against them until they are consumed. Why then did you not obey the voice of the Lord? 
Why did you pounce on the spoil and do what was evil in the sight of the Lord? And Saul said to Samuel, I have obeyed the voice of the Lord. I have gone on the mission on which the Lord sent me. I have brought Agag, the king of Amalek, and I have devoted the Amalekites to destruction. But the people took of the spoil, sheep and oxen, the best of the things devoted to destruction, to sacrifice to the Lord your God in Gilgal. And Samuel said, Has the Lord as great delight in burnt offerings and sacrifices as in obeying the voice of the Lord? Behold, to obey is better than sacrifice, and to listen than the fat of rams. For rebellion is as the sin of divination, and presumption is as iniquity and idolatry. Because you have rejected the word of the Lord, he has also rejected you from being king. Saul said to Samuel, I have sinned, for I have transgressed the commandment of the Lord and your words, because I feared the people and obeyed their voice. Now, therefore, please pardon my sin and return with me that I may bow before the Lord. And Samuel said to Saul, I will not return with you, for you have rejected the word of the Lord, and the Lord has rejected you from being king over Israel. As Samuel turned to go away, Saul seized the skirt of his robe and it tore. And Samuel said to him, the Lord has torn the kingdom of Israel from you this day and has given it to a neighbor of yours who is better than you. And also the glory of Israel will not lie or have regret, for he is not a man that he should have, that he should have regret. Then he said, I have sinned, yet honor me now before the elders of my people and before Israel and return with me that I may bow before the Lord your God. So Samuel turned back after Saul, and Saul bowed before the Lord. Then Samuel said, Bring here to me Agag, the king of the Amalekites. And Agag came to him cheerfully. Agag said, Surely the bitterness of death is past. And Samuel said, As your sword has made women childless, so shall your mother be childless among women. And Samuel hacked Agag to pieces before the Lord in Gilgal. Then Samuel went to Ramah, and Saul went up to his house in Gibeah of Saul. And Samuel did not see Saul again until the day of his death. But Samuel grieved over Saul, and the Lord regretted that he had made Saul king over Israel. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. We continue with the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Blessed be the Lord God of Israel, for he has visited and redeemed his people and has raised up a horn of salvation for us in the house of his servant David, as he spoke by the mouth of his holy prophets who have been since the world began, that we should be saved from our enemies and from the hand of all who hate us, to perform the mercy promised to our fathers and to remember his holy covenant, the oath which he swore to our father Abraham to grant us that we, being delivered from the hand of our enemies, might serve him without fear in holiness and righteousness before him all the days of our life. 
Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. Almighty and everlasting God, give us an increase of faith, hope, and love, that receiving what you have promised, we may love what you have commanded. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Today we remember and thank God for his servant Robert Barnes, confessor and martyr. We read from Celebrating the Saints by William Whedon. Robert Barnes was an Englishman, and by conviction, a Lutheran. He was born in 1495 in Norfolk and educated at Cambridge. He joined the Augustinian Friars, where he came to hear and know of another famous Augustinian, Martin Luther. Barnes was soon made a doctor of theology and became the prior for the Cambridge convent. In 1525, he preached a homily that historians regard as the first Reformation message publicly proclaimed from a pulpit in England. He was detained for this and charged with teaching heresy. He providentially escaped his imprisonment and crossed the channel to Antwerp. Once on the continent, he made his way to Wittenberg and became a personal acquaintance of Martin Luther and a dinner guest in his home. Barnes would not stay in the relative safety of Germany. He determined to return to England in 1531 and hoped to convince his beloved king of the truth of the Reformation gospel. At first, matters looked hopeful. He rose to government office and was sent back to Europe to possibly secure the blessing of Luther and other Lutheran theologians for his king's desire to divorce and remarry. This, of course, was a failure. And Henry VIII quickly soured on Lutheran theology when it would not serve his personal ends. Traditionalist forces in England that opposed Barnes's avowed Lutheran teaching and preaching resulted in Barnes being imprisoned and finally burned at the stake on July 30th 1540. The martyr's love for his king showed to the very end. His final prayer was, Lord, open the king of England's eyes. Luther wrote upon hearing of Barnes's martyrdom, This Dr. Robert Barnes we certainly knew, and it is a particular joy for me to hear that our good pious dinner guest and house guest has been so graciously called by God to pour out his blood and to become a holy martyr for the sake of his dear son. Hope betrayed him. For he always hoped his king would become good in the end. Let us praise and thank God. This is a blessed time for the elect saints of Christ, and an unfortunate time for the devil, for blasphemers and enemies, and it is going to get worse. Amen. Barnes was but one of six men who were executed upon this day. Luther gladly published Barnes's Confession of Faith and wrote the dedicatory preface. For those Lutherans who live in English-speaking lands, Robert Barnes is a particularly beloved herald of God's word, whom neither torture nor fear could dissuade from proclaiming the joyous truth of the saving gospel. We pray. Almighty God, Heavenly Father, you gave courage to your servant, Robert Barnes, to give up his life for confessing the true faith during the Reformation. May we continue steadfast in our confession of the apostolic faith and suffer all, even death, 
rather than fall away from it. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. We conclude with Luther's morning prayer. I thank you, my Heavenly Father, through Jesus Christ, your dear Son, that you have kept me this night from all harm and danger. And I pray that you would keep me this day also from sin and every evil, that all my doings in life may please you. For into your hands I commend myself, my body and soul and all things. Let your holy angel be with me, that the evil foe may have no power over me. Amen. O Lord, hear my prayer, and let my cry come before you. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Almighty and merciful Lord, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, order our days and our deeds in his peace. Amen. God bless your day, beloved.